May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be aligned with your love, O God, our strength, our courage, our freedom, and our community. Amen. Throughout my career as a preacher, I have been told frequently that the best sermons are the sermons with personal stories from my life. This sermon will have such a story later. The need or desire for personal stories addresses the need we all have for the personal. We see it in the first sentences of this morning's gospel reading. It reads, now among those international visitors to Jerusalem who went up to worship at the festival of Passover were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to Philip, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. These people wanted to go from the what of Jesus to the who of Jesus. It apparently was very important to Jesus for us to see ourselves as persons who matter to God. Each of us is a who to God in an important call for us not to waste our lives by giving them over to fear and worry and anxiety. Jesus emphasized that each of us personally matters to God Jesus says, do not fear. One of the 365 times fear is mentioned in the Bible as something we should not do. Jesus says, do not fear. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. That word from Jesus inspired one of my favorite hymns from my childhood. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. This sermon will close with Adelaide Bodecker Griffin singing that hymn to Matt Brown's accompaniment. In my effort this morning in this sermon to communicate with you and to you how crucial it is for you to base your entire life in a love-based relationship with God as opposed to a fear-based relationship or life in your own imagination. This is about confidence that God cares for you and cares for me personally and intimately Every hair of our heads is counted, Jesus says, even for those who have fewer and fewer hairs for God to count. We are not a what to God. We are a who to God. That is foundational to life with God. God sees you as a who, not a what And whenever you realize that you are not just having your fears, but you are becoming your fears, please stop and let the hymn, His Eyes on the Sparrow, and I Know He Watches Me, sing itself in your mind and heart. My spiritual North Star, Thomas Merton, distinguishes between the person and the individual. Two very important distinctive nouns to Merton's thinking The person is the who of human beings. The individual is the what of human beings. Merton says that if all you see when you see human beings and even yourself is their whatness, there can be no true community or what what Dr. King called the beloved community or what Jesus called the kingdom of God or the system of God. That is the business of seeing human beings as others when you see a person and see their whatness. These days it's called otherizing people, seeing people as other. However, 
if you and I see human beings as persons, not individuals, as who, not what, or as Jesus said, seeing your neighbor as yourself, then immediately you see the unity Jesus prayed for in John 17. Merton said, the individual exists in separateness and isolation. Individuals are superficially connected. But the person is a center of love and freedom. Persons are linked with sisters and brothers in all that makes them human and in a sharing of all that makes them one in Christ. It is only persons, Merton says, who can create the fullness of community. Persons are able to say with St. Paul, I live now not I, the isolated individual, the what, but Christ, the person, the who, joined together with other persons, lives in me. Two stories, personal. When I moved to Jackson, Mississippi with my family to become the dean of the cathedral there, the chair of the search committee and the senior warden was taking me on a tour of the buildings in an evening after everyone was gone. And at one point, we looked up at the door of the parish hall that had windows in it, and there was clearly a person who was homeless there knocking on the door, wanting to come in. I thought to myself, a homeless person. But this chair of the search committee and the senior warden said, Ed, that's some mother's son. A who. I've been in training for more than 20 years to try to develop some multicultural skills for living with difference, recognize and appreciating and celebrating difference. Uh, one of the other students in my group all these years is a man who's African-American and with whom I've become very close and have heard his stories about his wife and his children. And one night we were in the circle of peers supervising one another and this African-American friend of mine was talking about his wife's illness and how his children were coming in to help. And the Holy Spirit came to me and reminded me of a man, an elder who was the gardener for the white lady who kept me when I was a child. And for some reason, the Holy Spirit moved me from the what about that man, that elder gardener, to the who. And I realized that I didn't even know that man's last name, and I had never considered that that man had a life apart from being the gardener for the lady who kept me. I had not even thought that he had a wife or a family. And then I thought that my friend there in the circle who is my age could have been this gardener's son. And I began to weep, weep at the fact that I had lived in a what mentality about that gardener and had never considered him a person, a who. Everybody has a personal story. I think it's fair to say that all of us are brokenhearted over the mass shootings that took place in massage spas run by Asian American Pacific Islanders this past week here in Atlanta. 
the adult son of one of the victims. One of the victims was a mother to this adult son. He told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that his mother had been laid off amid the pandemic and she had been excited to return to work. She frequently spent her time cooking Korean food, visiting friends, watching movies and soap operas, or reading. He went on to say, my mother didn't do anything wrong, and she deserves the recognition that she is a human. She's a community person like everyone else. None of those people deserved what happened to them. Fulton County's medical examiner said that this adult male's mother died after she was shot in the head. I often quote Mother Teresa, who famously said that the problems we have in our world boil down to the fact that we have forgotten that we belong to one another. Thomas Merton would insist that the reason we have forgotten that we belong to one another is because we have seen one another as what? As individuals, a collectivity of individuals, rather than as whos, as a person being a who, created as interconnected and interwoven creatures made by God who cares so much that God's eye, God cares so much about each one of us that God's eye is on each one of us caring for us the way God cares for the sparrow. It just may be that not seeing each person as a human being is the deepest sin of all dehumanization the deepest source of evil the deepest source of oppression the deepest source of violence of murder and eventually source of war there are churches that are so focused on the what of women or gay people or people of color. They are so focused on the problems of humanity like alcoholism and sexual problems as a choice not a medical condition. All churches, all faith communities need to move from whatifying people to seeing people as who. Let me just raise a few issues that disturbed me last week and look with me now through the lens of dehumanization or not seeing people as persons with personal stories. I was so distressed at the Pope last week, bless his heart, saying that we are to treat gay people with dignity but not bless their marriages because God does not bless sin. That is so wrong. I wanted to immediately set up a Zoom meeting between the Pope and some same-sex marriages I know so that he could go from what to who in every case. At the University of the South at Sewanee, students yelled racial epithets at visiting lacrosse players who were black. So pronounced were the shouted slurs in the third quarter that the game officials on the field ordered that Sewanee fans be cleared before the play could continue. Of course, the vice chancellor, who's African-American himself, gathered those African-American athletes together before they left campus. And as a black man and as vice chancellor, apologized for the overt racism. I 
I got the who, what distinction that I've been using in this sermon from a testimony of a transgender young woman at a Senate hearing last week. Her own testimony about who she is inside, despite the gender she was assigned at birth. Her name is Tiffany Cross. She represents an organization called Gender Cool. And she says, we need to create a world where everyone is known for who we are, not what we are. My friend, it's, it's the fifth Sunday in Lent. We're on the cusp of Holy Week. Easter is not a one time a year, one event in the life of Jesus experience. Easter is not about whether or not you believe or not, but whether you and I are going to enter into the dance of the unity of everything where everyone and everything has personhood. This is a world that we are called to enter into where every one of our prejudices, every one of our egocentrisms and self-references references and tribalism, all of that has to die like the seed that Jesus talks about in the gospel. Unless a seed falls into the earth and dies, it cannot bear great fruit. My friends, we are called today to give up and let die our dehumanization. Give up your whatness for Lent. Every time someone in your midst starts otherizing someone, may I pray that you have the courage to say that is some mother's child. That is some father's child. That person has a story. That person has a dream. That is a who. We are called to understand that Jesus calls us to two loves. God love, which is a vertical love, and neighbor love, which is a horizontal love. We need not to be churches that are just about vertical love. We need to be faith communities that are about the love that is vertical and horizontal. And just before you raise the courage to interrupt someone else's identification of a person as a thing or a what, listen in your hearts to the wonderful hymn, His Eyes on the Sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let us listen to Adelaide sing that as the conclusion of this sermon now.
see. 